Last month, video from a white nationalist conference in D.C. went viral. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! The clip got more than 40 million views. The event was organized by Richard Spencer, one of the spokespeople for the so-called alt-right, which now has allies as high up as Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Ellie Reeve met up with Spencer to find out what the alt-right movement really is. It's the night before the big conference. It's like a counterinsurgency. And Richard Spencer is planning an escape for about 100 alt-riders <laughs> because protesters have crashed their dinner party. Basically, this just mob of smelly, disgusting freaks just comes, I mean, you can still smell them right now. You can still smell them. Uh, they start coming up the stairs and they're chanting, you know, die fascist, do Stalingrad again. I, can't, I don't even know any of their stupid stuff. The one guy sprayed me, so I had some skunk it's like shit liquid. Yeah, so I had to take off my shirt and now I look a bit like Popeye, but, uh, or I don't know, maybe it's a good yeah. look. All right, let's do this. Yeah. I, I usually go out and like wave to them when they do these things, just to show that I don't give a fuck about them and their stupid, you know, whatever. Oh, wow, you didn't accomplish anything. I guess it's kind of par for the course for you fucking loser idiots, right? Their base, their whole life is based on hate. Since Donald Trump's election, the media has been obsessed with the so-called alt-right movement. The alt-right is growing. The alt-right is real. The alt-right is not going anywhere. And the alt-right is going to change the world. A lot of that obsession has been directed at Spencer, since he's one of the only people in the alt-right to show his real face and use his real name. He even has a real think tank, the National Policy Institute, even though it's run out of his apartment. Who are you? NPI argues against multiculturalism and for increasing the political and cultural power of white people. We aren't just white. White is a checkbox on the census form. We are part of the people's history, spirit, and civilization of Europe. Are we ready to become who we are? When people talk about the alt-right, they're talking about an online culture that evolved on sites like 4chan and Reddit where young men share self-deprecating jokes about being virgins and trade offensive memes. I think alt-right was beat out as, as the word of the year by... Uh, by uh, post-truthiness. Post-truthiness. <laughs> but it's it just... Kidding, really. <laughs> oh, thanks. Spencer's conference drew less than 300 people this year, which leaves the question, is the alt-right really a rising political movement, or is it just a bunch of kids messing around online? We met up with him on a windy afternoon by the Lincoln Memorial. We should huddle together for warmth, I guess. Mm. Do you think the alt-right is uh, real? What does that mean? Is it mostly a mirage out of like a lot of Twitter bots? What we've been able to do is leverage ourselves because of the power of our ideas. We're the ones people want to talk to. We're the ones people fear. Uh -huh. And that shows our power. Do you really think that it's real? Yes. Do you have Steve Bannon's ear? Can you call him on the phone? <laughs> no. Uh, the only connection between Bannon and Spencer is that they shook hands once at a party. We memed alt-right into existence, and it's now almost a household name. These memers often call each other neckbeards, slang for socially inept guys who spend a lot of time online and not enough on grooming. Do you ever feel like 10,000 neckbeards are living vicariously through you? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've never thought about it that way. Uh -huh. uh, uh, look, it, yeah, because, because this is a radical movement, not everyone can be open. Not everyone's willing to do that, and I totally understand why. So if they want to see me as a representative, great. I don't see what's wrong with that. But, <laughs> but the people who created like the, the texts of the alt-right are teenagers on 4chan, who've trolled themselves into believing anti-Semitic stuff. Do you know what's interesting is that there, I have actually met some kids yeah. from 4chan who started reading anything critical of race relations, immigration, uh, Jewish influence, so on. And they actually read this stuff so that they could troll people. Right. But after reading it, they were actually convinced by it. But that, again, that is demonstrates in a way the, the truth quality to it. Doesn't it just mean they're too committed to a joke? It started out as a joke and then it became real. But that's magic. 
but it's like you can call you again you, you can say oh it's all fake it's not real it's the realest thing there is you 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 describe you'll often like compliment the alt-right but just use snarky language so I, I kind of you know it's like I, I actually agree with a lot of the things you're saying just yeah. not the the tone and the snark well I like to troll the trolls uh, and you think try harder <laughs> yeah come on come on well start I, trolling I think you're a Spit fraud. It out. You think I'm a fraud? You're a fraud. How is yeah. that? Well, you, you are you are exploiting hatred that has always been around and will always be around. Mm -hmm. And you've repackaged it and you've become the face of it. I would never say that Richard Spencer has, through rational argumentation, convinced millions of Americans to vote for Donald Trump or created the alt-right through rational. I am riding a wave, too. But the idea that I don't do this for idealistic reasons, I just think is totally off base. <laughs>